Hi y'all, this is Lancey with Cricut. I'm going to show you how I decorated my cornhole boards with a wood stain, glow-in-the-dark paint and resin using Cricut stencils and Cricut iron-on. Don't worry, I'll go over what you need before each step, so let's get started. First, let's start by mixing up the stain. Stir the stain with the stick so it doesn't promote air bubbles. Don't shake the can. After it's been mixed together, dip your rag or sponge into the stain. I actually use strips from an old t-shirt to do this. Then start covering the surface of your boards. If you're wanting to avoid staining any parts of the wood, cover it with painter's tape beforehand. Don't do it like me as an afterthought. You'll see what I mean. Anyway, less is more of a stain. It doesn't take much. I actually learned this the hard way, but unlike paint, stain penetrates wood rather than coats it. The solvent in the stain evaporates, leaving the color behind. If you've let your stain dry for more than a reasonable amount of time and it still feels tacky, it's likely you've applied too much stain. In most cases, you only need one coat of stain. Once everything is stained, let it dry and we'll move on to the next step. To create a base design for my boards, I used a sunburst image I found in Design Space. The image was pretty busy for my taste, so I wanted to tone it down by contouring it. This button's located on the bottom right. Since there was a lot of contouring, I hit all contours at first, then picked through to select which dots I wanted to make visible. After randomizing the dots on top, I did the same thing with the image I copied to the bottom. This image and my scoreboard design can all be found on the blog tutorial link below in the description. When my designs are ready, I cut them on my Cricut Maker. Stencil vinyl for the scoreboard and base design, black Cricut iron on for the personal branding. Lay the scoreboard stencil onto the end closest to the hole. If you use the stencil I created, it should match fairly well within the long board. I got lazy and eyeballed the little pieces, but feel free to use transfer tape for more precise placement. Don't forget that my template has a holding space to the right for a bottle opener. Then grab your carving tools or Dremel and have at it. I found it easiest to guide the carving tool with my non-dominant hand while pushing firmly with the other. Take care to go slow and steady. A sleight of hand sometimes took the carving a bit too far for me. If you use a Dremel, let me know how it goes in the comments. After carving the Roman numerals and dots in between, I used a red sharpie to mark the peg holes on top. I'll use the drill later to mark these holes for score keeping. Do the same with the other board, and you're ready for the next step. After you weed your iron-on design, ready the board surface. Make sure it's clean and use the Cricut Heat Guide for guidance on how to apply it. In my case, I needed to preheat for 5 seconds at medium using my Easy Press Mini. Use a piece of butcher paper or parchment paper to keep the stained wood from staining the easy press. When that's done, place the design onto the surface with heat resistant tape and proceed according to the heat guide. In my case, using an iron on design against a wood surface, I needed to heat it for 40 seconds while constantly moving the easy press mini around. Don't overheat it. When I pressed my design for longer than the recommended time, I found that the adhesive would seep out and leave an ugly residue on the boards. Trust in the heat guide. When the design is cool, peel off the backer. Don't peel too early. I like to use a cooking metaphor here, but peeling too early is just like cutting into a steak before it's had a chance to rest. The juices will seep out. Let the design rest first. Repeat the process with the second board and then on to the next step. Let's add the epoxy resin to the scoreboards. Mix your resin and hardener according to directions. Likely you'll add equal parts of both into a clean container, then stir for three to five minutes. I've seen recommendations to pour the resin and hardener into separate containers first, but in this application, I'm using such a small amount, I found it easier just to add it directly into one container. When you've stirred the solution for three to five minutes, add the glow-in-the-dark powder. According to my directions, I only add one part powder to four parts resin mixture, so I guesstimated about one-fourth of the powder, then continued to stir it thoroughly into the solution. Before you pour the resin into the carvings, make sure your boards are as flat and upright as possible. This will help keep the resin from dripping towards the direction of gravity. Use a toothpick to guide the resin onto the scoreboard by dipping the toothpick into the resin, then dipping it back into the carved areas. I was a bit all over the place, but this helped keep the resin from going outside the lines as much as I could. Continue to fill the rest of the board, then use a heat gun or torch to get rid of any surfacing bubbles in the resin. With the heat gun or torch on, skim the surface of the resin to dissipate the bubbles on the surface. Do this quickly. Heating the resin too much will actually cause more bubbles to form as it sort of boils the solution. Acrylic paint dries fairly quickly, so I recommend gathering all your needs before you begin. Then, start with the base design using the stencil. 
Place your platform stencil on the board by starting with a smaller section. Line up the edge of the hole to help guide placement as you smooth it onto the board. Using the outline of the hole and the smaller stencil for reference, lay the larger stencil onto the board. As long as the surface is clean, stencil vinyl can be repositioned several times, so don't be afraid to try it again if it's not aligning well. Then start painting. I dab the paint onto the boards using a stencil brush, rotating through the different colors. Since my paint dried as soon as I finished a color, I would go right into adding another coat. However, I found it best to remove the stencil before the last coat of paint dried. This helped keep the painted design on the boards rather than getting lifted up with the dried paint from the stencil. After the base design, I added more layers with a bit of freeform painting. For texture, I used a sponge to add different colored layers of glow-in-the-dark paint. Simply dip the sponge in paint and dab it all over. The texture created by using the sponge provided the galaxy effect I wanted for the design. Then I added more stars by flicking paint onto the board. Using the sides of the paint container, I flicked the paint randomly across the board with an acrylic paintbrush to get a variety of stars. Switching between these two methods, I created multiple layers while checking my progress with a UV or black light. Eventually, I formed enough layering to achieve the galaxy look I was aiming for. To amp up the glow, I added a few accents onto the legs too. I painted the top of the legs using the acrylic paintbrush and then used painter's tape to help paint a line through the middle of the support board. I also added paint to the insides of the circles. After the paint was dry, I moved on to the poly coat. Give the boards a quick wipe down before you start. Then stir the poly to mix it thoroughly. Using the foam brush or an applicator of your choice, spread even strokes across the boards. After the first pass through, feather the poly without adding more onto the brush for a smoother coat. You can coat the entire board, but I only did the top and sides as they would be the most exposed. Be sure to check for any bubbles before the poly dries. Get rid of the bubbles by tapping them with a brush. Don't forget to paint the legs and repeat the process for the minimum amount of coats as recommended by the manufacturer of your poly coating. Wait for each coat to dry before applying the next one. I basically poly coated my boards for an entire day. Paint, wait for dry, paint, wait for dry, paint, wait for dry, until the night sky came down. The next day I sanded the boards lightly with the mouse sander using 400 grit paper. Sanding will help even out the surface of the boards for a smoother finish, so I wanted to do this just before I finished the poly coating process. Wipe the boards clean after you sand with a damp cloth, then paint the last few coats of poly to finish it off. If you just can't get enough, see how I made the cornhole boards from start to finish, and not just the Cricut decoration, by visiting the blog linked below. Otherwise, leave any questions in the comments, I'll try my best to get them answered. Thanks for tuning in! Alright, alright, I'll quickly answer a couple burning questions. Yep, there are several outfit changes because I made this video over the course of several days, and yes, I do have a lot of gray shirts. One last question? Well, I'm pretty shy, I suppose, but I really just didn't want to pull attention away from the boards. Hey, eyes on the boards, please. Eyes up here.